they call it black hawk sometimes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. What do I do in the military? Yeah, basically <laughs> that's what my experience Okay, goes. so this is what I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. our, our rifle marksmanship. So they, they give us training for like about two to three days. Mm -hmm. The second reward, they took us to the food court and I got to eat Taco Bell that day. Oh, wow. It's marksmanship. There's a total of 40 targets. 2024 U.S. elections. This might be controversial, but yeah. I can see that they're already rigged. Hey. <laughs> I mean... We are gonna having a beautiful podcast ahead. My name is Aaron Hingu. You are watching Bluntcast, where the conversations are truly bluntly the best. So... Here you go. Uh, hello, Jigar Gohel. Hello, How are Aryan Hengu. I'm uh, excited to see you. Uh, me too, me too. Uh, how are you? Uh, I'm surviving approximately on zero hours of sleep, <laughs> just like you have <laughs> since last night. Okay, okay. And yeah, all this excitement to come see you all this way, I would say about what, 1,000 kilometers away? Uh huh. That, that kept me going. Yeah, yeah. So, so it it is very uh, mesmerizing and very overwhelming to see you. Uh, I haven't seen him for a while now. For he, about 2019, so 20, about four oh years. Oh man, yeah man. <laughs> I didn't even realize yeah. we are about, we haven't met in... Oh yeah, uh, the Rinkinson... Uh, uh, Rinkinson's Big Beast wedding. Birthday. Yeah, sorry, wedding. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, oh man. It's a big a day, day where I... Last saw my big cousin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it is what it is. And uh, how was your experience? First, the tell us about your experience uh, when you moved from India to okay. US. What were your ex uh, expectations, and uh, is or are those experiences have uh, gained your imagination when? You were back in India and imagined what you will be in US. So yeah, just hmm. maybe in detail, maybe in brief, doesn't matter. Yeah. So I would say <clears throat> this experience of me being living in a different region that I'm from, mm -hmm. that has kind of been part of my life. Okay. Let me explain. Okay. My family and I, we've been moving every three to four years even since I was born. Yeah. Um, and uh, you might know Kendra Vidyale. Yeah. yeah. KV. KV, yes. And that is where they put me because we were moving every three years. Mm -hmm. Okay. First to Chandigarh, then to Rajkot, then to UP. UP, yeah. UP, Bhavnagar. Bhavnagar. And then to Rajkot again, oh, then nice. to US and Chicago. Oh, um, so having said that, I would say um, I would say I've lived the longest in one city, and it's about time to move now. <laughs> it's almost been more than a uh, decade, one point two decades to be exact. Uh -huh. um, and this experience, I would say, has been truly amazing, and it has taught me. It has pretty much taught me who I am, because last, you know, these. I would say when I was growing up. The teen years when you have your, um, uh, where you learn to form habits, okay, those were formed in India. Oh, yeah. And all the years after that, when you learn to apply those habits, that actually, the application of those habits came to me in this country. And this country has given me a lot. Yeah. Like, I'm really thankful to be here. Yeah. So, uh, do let us know what were our... What are your experience of joining uh, U.S. Army? Means you have asked to join it, or you have deliberately uh, wanted to join it. What? How was this initiation? Okay. Um, I've always been an adventurous person, mm -hmm. um, as you know. Yeah. But pretty much this joining the military was kind of like a uh, unfinished thought okay always in back mm -hmm. of my mind mm -hmm. when i was watching border when mm -hmm. i was watching yuri all these movies military yeah. movies you know how in our body movies they make it so interesting and so for you to want to do it 
eventually when you grow up. Mm -hmm. So that has that one thought has always stayed in the back of my mind. And when we moved to the US with pretty much nothing, okay, I wouldn't say I was like, oh, I was so poor, I didn't have food to eat or anything. Mm -hmm. We were a um, middle class family. And when we got the chance to uh, move to, to, to become permanent residents and move to the US through my uncle, my mom's older brother, who had mm -hmm. been here for about four or five decades, mm -hmm. then back then, so maybe two more decades add to that. Yeah. Okay. So that being said, when we came here, that we started off just like every three years I, I had done in the past. And that this one thought formulated into reality when these actually, these recruiters, okay, there's, there's this tradition in America where these recruiters, they go to colleges and high schools mm -hmm. to recruit all these motivated individuals, okay? Okay. And <clears throat> my main motive back then was I didn't want to give up all my life to the military mm -hmm. because I didn't know what I would be getting into, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. But this one program called Army Reserves, okay. that actually allows you to become a civilian, but also a, be part of a military. Okay. And my main motivation was the tuition benefit. Hmm, hmm, okay. Hmm. They provide about approximately five to six K per year oh. um, towards your tuition. Okay. So initially, that is what was in my mind. Okay. I'll join the military, I'll go to the training, mm. I'll come back with all these benefits and I will go to school and have a successful career. Perfect. Which is what kind of happened. Huh. So I'm so glad I did. But yes, this thought had been there, but I had never actually seen myself actually serve in a, any country's military, mm -hmm. let alone a different country's military. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, that's very interesting. But that's... That came into reality for like completely a different reason than I grew up with. Yeah. It was like kind of like unexpected. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> I've seen you, okay, uh, before uh, you went to US, you, he was a pretty much, uh, uh, you know, um, a wasted child. He has no discipline. He had no, uh, you know, uh, no sense of financial uh, stability and all stuff. Yeah, he was a teen before, but I wanted to know how this uh, military training for four months changed your life and the perspective of your life. How you how you see yourself towards the future. How you how you act yourself towards the future, maybe, or yeah, how it changed your whole life. Because I've seen you before you joined the military and I have seen you after that it's an it's an it's an it's not 1920 difference it's an a horse or elephant difference you know that's yeah. how bigger I have uh, seen the difference in you so explain that what did what did it change in the training what was the process what made you realize that it is not life what you have living lived before but it is what now what we I'm going to live and from different perspective you know uh, yeah. Please. Okay. Mm, interesting question. So yes, it has changed me a lot mm. for the better. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I would start with um, this one again when I was moving back and forth mm -hmm. uh, all my life. I would start with that. Okay. So that was on a smaller level, which had kind of um, made me familiar to different perspectives in life, okay? Different okay. perspectives of different people. As you know, we in our country, in India, mm -hmm. we mm. have, if you go 100 kilometers south or 100 kilometers north, mm. you will see completely different mm. people, different dialects, maybe different cultures and different languages. Yes, yeah. 100% different, different cultures way of thinking. and different languages. Perfect, yeah. 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 So that one thing I kind of had uh, coming into the military. Mm -hmm. Okay, the rest of it was just waste. I was complaining all the time. <laughs> Why don't I have this particular toy that my friend has, mom? Why? Yeah. And then I would always keep asking the questions, like, why am 
I not rich? Why? What's going on with this world? Um, why is uh, all these questions? Mm -hmm. They weren't formulated with these words yet. Okay, yeah. I was just curious that how come this guy can have what like I can't have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So all these things were complaints before. Yeah. Complaints and comparisons. Complaints and comparisons. Okay. Yeah. And um, when you go to the military training, I won't go into too much specifics. Yeah, no. Okay. But their main motive is to either break you mm -hmm. or break you and then make you stronger and then make you successful. Mm -hmm. okay? And mm -hmm. most importantly, be a part of a team, which as individuals, we in our family, okay, we kind of don't do too much because you know how we're treated as pampered. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, sugar, you are the best. Okay. And then I would think, oh wow, I'm so cool. Yeah. You know? <laughs> what team? What <laughs> I, I, I'm yeah, the yeah. I'm the team. The team, yeah. You know? So I would say that was exactly what happened. Uh the training was actually six total months. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. So there's two different types of training. One transitions you, it's called basic combat training, mm -hmm. okay, BCT. Mm -hmm. And another one is called AIT, mm -hmm. Advanced Individual Training. Okay. Okay. Both together, it was about six months for me. It can be uh, longer for or shorter for um, other people with other occupations, okay. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> first training, BCT, okay. That's meant to convert you from a civilian mm. to a uh, disciplined person. It may be a soldier. Mm. Okay, mm. soldier is just being part of it. But all your life is not about being a soldier. It's about being a, a little bit more disciplined man and know how to provide your skills and gain those skills yeah. and know the bigger picture all the time. Which skill will help? you know, at this bigger, massive scale, as a country scale, how one three hundredth of a million, okay? There's 300, pe 300 million people uh, in the U.S. How come one person, what difference can they make? Okay. okay. So that is what their main motive uh, to teach you behind all these different hardships and exercises they make you go through. Mm -hmm. I was bald. I was shaving every day, yeah. no no civilian clothes. Yeah. Um, it's almost like you're back in um, 1800s, you're writing letters. Mm, okay, my, mm. my parents used to write letters and oh, yeah. that, that was our way yeah. of communicating. Mm -hmm. uh, all your personal belongings are taken away taken for that away. much. And then you really actually start, you know, looking inside mm -hmm. without all these distractions you have around you. Mm. Okay, how will you, how will I look tomorrow? Okay, uh, where's my friend today? All mm -hmm. these different distractions, they're gone. Yeah, <laughs> I have seen okay. you that you had n number of hairstyles. Uh, he used to make uh, in his teenage when when we were when, when he was in Rajkot back in India, and you know he. Back in the days, it's it's about 2010 or 11. I as far as I remember, used to make those, uh, used to make those, use uh, gels. yeah, use, use, use gels and fuzzy hairs and you know the straightens and yeah. uh, unfixtured hairs and all and and suddenly you your hair you are bald now. You know it's a different feeling back then, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a different feeling, and also since I've been back. Uh. I've had this one hairstyle. Yeah, I have seen <laughs> this hairstyle. It's all... been a decade, yes. man. It's been a decade. Because so. there's no need. So all these small things. So this is what it'll teach you. It'll teach you the meaning of like prioritizing and what's more important to you and more what's more important to people around you. And those small things that don't matter, they'll eventually start going away. Mm -hmm. uh, if you keep those ethos in mind, Mm. Okay, those those they call them army values, mm. but they're applied pretty much to I would apply to the entire population of this earth. Yeah. 
if people started living by these values, I would say half the crime, half of pretty much all the problems, important problems in the world, will just vanish instantly. Mm-hmm. So one day I was working and mm-hmm. you called me, right? So I was when you, when you ended your call, I had your image in my, my mind, okay? Yeah. And I have thought that particular day, why he has that that same hairstyle <laughs> since a decade why he is not changing now you know yeah. you can uh, you you are you are seeing this many influencers or maybe celebrities yeah. and they have various type of uh, hairstyles but no you are you have the same hairstyle since past back in the decade 1.2 decades am i i guess so yeah yeah uh, yeah man and also explain um uh how i mean to you are not in as far as i know you are not in those combat uh, uh, training or combat military set of uh, uh, workings you has you had yeah. to do and how it's uh, categorized yeah just let us know okay um i get your question yeah what do i do in the military yeah basically <laughs> that's what my thing okay. was so this is what i do <laughs> let's okay um before i say that let's go through a little bit of like uh basics but these are basics in general across mm. the countries mm. any country's military you will find these things okay okay so we live in this world mm. and we have bunch of different companies mm. that make different products okay somebody makes hair products somebody makes food somebody these farmers they farming companies they make food for you mm. um some people as your dad um his his company they make clothes for you yeah. right all these let's say 8 billion people we have okay and 8 billion people are kind of divided within company different companies will make different products and as a society we will we will share these products we'll buy and sell yeah, trade right. with each other and survive and progress yeah. our okay. civilization yeah 100% okay so that's pretty much how it works inside the military hmm. so hmm. there any country's military goal or any country's uh, military's goal main mission is to survive and march ahead and win wars uh, when let's just say victory in general mm-hmm. sorry yeah. we had some oh, good right. indian food <laughs> <laughs> okay it was good man yeah <laughs> so um as i was saying so their goal is to survive without the help of anyone else in the world hmm. let's say if we are in a remote area okay in antarctica or something okay uh the military should be able to have all the skills that are required for their for their soldiers to not only survive but prosper hmm. and hmm. accomplish their mission hmm. Hmm. right hmm. so let's say there is a barber company okay so so each unit in the military is pretty much a company that does something mm-hmm. okay some type of skill each company has each unit in the military has mm-hmm. okay so we come together and if let's say if everybody everybody non military all civilians were to die today the us or any other military in the world they can survive they can make clothes they can make food they can make all the necessary uh, oh. accommodations for you to survive if everybody else died and if you're in the military you will still have those glasses okay <laughs> you will still have doctors <laughs> you will still have yeah. okay so just like that my unit that i'm attached to we are um we're called so the name of my unit is expeditionary railway mm. center Mm-hmm. okay and we're the only unit a company um in the US all departments of military marines navy air force space force mm-hmm. army all these all these departments we're the only unit that has anything to do with rail infrastructure mm-hmm. okay rail movements okay so back to the question now what do i do oh. in the military yeah. so now that we know the like a unit is some like it's a group of people that does 
something that possess some, some skill that is being provided mm. to accomplish the mission. Mm. Okay. Mm. Now, let's say uh, U.S. military has uh, a brigade of 1,000 soldiers, 1,000 tanks, uh, 1,000 Humvees, one, 10,000 machine guns. Okay. Uh, pretty much, in short, massive inventory of people and equipment. Mm. Mm. Okay. Now, uh, military uh, intelligence, they have researched something and they're saying, oh, uh, somewhere 8,000 miles away, something like this might happen in two to three or four to five years. Okay. So we want to be ready. Okay. Okay. We don't know much in insides of the military, but they're always ready. Oh, um, yeah. So uh, my, my job will be to uh, go to that country. Let's say, let's pick one country A. Okay. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, so uh, army will send a, t a team from my unit. Okay. Four to five people. They will go uh, to that uh, host nation we call them, we, the, the country that we will deploy to. Mm, okay. Mm. We'll mm. go meet their government and our counterparts who are infrastructure, or specifically rail, but all three. Okay. Air, water, and uh, rail. Okay, all three can include roads in there, but we don't have much to do with uh, roadways. Mm -hmm. So uh, we would meet with them, analyze their rail network of the entire country, and we'll come up with a plan, pretty much, that, okay, this country has this gauge. Okay, it's different from ours. There's the first problem right there. Okay. That's just an example, okay? Uh, this country has the tunnels that are not big enough. So our M1 Abram tanks cannot fit. Mm -hmm. uh, this country has these bridges that are not uh, structurally sound. We will do all the testing. We'll come up with a whole report of their whole infrastructure of rail okay. and ports. So after we come back with the report, the generals will know exactly that, okay, this country... Uh, Okay, that's the port that we should put our ship onto, okay? We should sail our ship to this port and we should use this rail route, okay, okay. to go to that uh, military base and this will be the most efficient route and this is the equipment we'll be able to bring unless all these, unless we'll also come up with some solutions, mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm. Unless uh, there is some work being done on this part of rail to make it stronger or whatever it is, Okay, and we'll come up with a solution and also an estimated time. Mm -hmm. This is how long it'll take uh, for us to be in that war zone. Okay. Okay, when the time comes. Okay. So that's a part of what we do. Uh -huh. um, so anything to do with rail infrastructure in particular, that's what we focus on. And there's a lot of details to it. Yeah. We'll go over it some other day. Yeah, perfect. Uh, the other thing I... I am keen to ask since many years, many, many years is uh, I have heard of back in days where, uh, when you have shot uh, 38 uh, targets. But it was 40 total, which, which you had to hit and you have shotted uh, 38 of uh, them into target and you have um, uh, scored a medal or scored a, a name of sharpshooter. Uh, oh, yeah, you remember that. Yeah, I remember that. Okay. Uh, if you remember, tell me what was your mind at that point of time. So, tell me about that. I'm, I'm like, the <laughs> thing is, I've bragged that to everyone I have speak to that, you, what you are. Okay. I have bragged that this thing this many years. So, yeah, it is what <laughs> I mean, it is. Okay. So, we shoot M16 guns. Okay. Uh huh. M16A4 guns. They're about seven pounds, 3.5 yeah. kilo, mm -hmm. four kilos each. Um, it was actually uh, 36 out of 40. Okay, sorry, <laughs> my bad, my okay. bad. Okay. And uh, this was uh, during my basic combat training, mm -hmm. our our rifle marksmanship. So they, they give us training for like about two to three days. Mm -hmm. And then the last day is um, it's marksmanship. There's a total of 40 targets 
uh, moving and otherwise, and mm. you have different positions, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, prone supported, which is like sleeping almost, yeah. okay? Kneeling and standing, three, three okay. different positions and um, 40 total targets. Mm -hmm. Some of them are multiple or some of them are moving or some of them are, it's up from 500, or oh, sorry, 50 meters to 300 meters. Okay. And the 300 meters one, it looks like this big. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, but um, you can use any strategies. So they tell us that, okay, in, in 300 meters, you'll only have four targets. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, 250 meters, you'll have this many out of, they don't tell you the line when they will come in. Okay. But if you want to save those rounds, if you think that you're not going to hit the 300, okay, you just save those rounds, use those rounds to the ones you actually missed nearby. You mm -hmm. know, but either way, so so twenty three was to pass. You are called a marksman from twenty three, all the way to uh, thirty five. Oh, okay, nice. And then from thirty six, yeah. if you shot thirty six or two thirty nine, uh -huh. then you are a sharpshooter. Okay. And then, if you are forty, then you're expert. Oh, yes. I knew that. Um, they call it Black Hawk sometimes. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> but so I, so the, so the sharpshooter, okay, so I became a sharpshooter uh, and I wasn't the only one. There was a, like a few of us, okay? Okay. Nobody expert. Nobody shot 40. Okay. But there was no medal or anything. Our reward actually was, it's a little funny. So you know how I said we are not That's what in I contact. want to ask you. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, please okay. explain. I wanted to hear that. Cool. So, so we got to get um, get a ten minute phone call at home oh, man. Oh, man. that day, but we had to go to the office of yeah. the captain and like use his phone. Uh -huh. um, so we had ten minutes of the phone call, which I called home. I talked mm. to mother, brother. Okay. Anyways, oh. yeah. so. The second reward, they took us to the food court mm. that was nearby, and I got to eat Taco Bell that day. Oh man! How many days haven't you eaten? That was more than a medal for me. Oh, <laughs> that has oh, been. Man. This is about six weeks into uh -huh. just eating uh, just military cafeteria food. Yeah. Oh yes. Being a vegetarian, vegetarian back then, yeah. 12 years yeah. ago, was there wasn't too much focus being put on like, Protein you know, that type of diet, yeah. vegetarian, vegetarian diet before. It was quick. Like, you know how I said, there is companies and units for everything. Mm -hmm. So the unit, the cafeteria is owned by the, the, the unit that cooks. Food unit, yeah. Okay. There are military cooks. Okay. They're made to cook fast. Okay. Just enough nutrition for you to survive and progress mm. and if somebody has an exception whatever yeah they, you know, they don't. like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i used to survive on peanut butter sandwiches um uh, salad bar there was long salad bar um but never the main entree i'd say sometimes there was like this cheese tortellini mm -hmm. uh, with only cheese and sauce so like no meat in it so that I used to eat sometimes, but yeah, that that one thing I wanted to mention that yeah. I used to be a vegetarian before. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. So yeah, that 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 was I I would say, you know, I wouldn't want a medal because this was better than a medal. medal. <laughs> that ten minute phone call and talk about oh that's okay. something. Yeah. Uh do let us know about your academical background. Uh, after six months of training, you had your three or maybe four years in UIC, University of Chicago. How was that experience academically? And after that, how did you, um, or uh, which uh, um, field job you started to focusing on more? So uh, I wanted to study construction, mm -hmm. uh, civil engineering in uh, specific. Mm -hmm tech boom that happened from 2000 to pretty much now, dude, this construction boom. Mm -hmm. 
it will start soon. Um, yeah, okay. So the, the amount of work needed just to maintain all the infrastructure in the US, mm -hmm. let alone all these emerging market economies, emerging countries, we can talk about yeah, India uh, in specific soon, but all these, they need to still build. Okay, the US, they're in the category of maintaining. They should be still always growing, but let's say they've become lazy and they need to maintain. Think about all these other countries that still need to build so much. Mm -hmm. We have so much to build. build. There's not that much infrastructure in the world. Yeah. If you think about it, if you go outside Canada and US and a couple other, you know, um, uh, developed economies. Mm -hmm. So that's, this wasn't the exact thought, but I was kind of going that way. I was like, okay, uh, either first, because I can do it. Second, because I see myself uh, contributing a lot in this field. Yeah. There's a lot of um, work coming okay. our way. Which it's it still is. If you yeah. want to switch fields, <laughs> <laughs> first yeah. you were an Indian, uh, now you are a U.S. citizen. Yeah. Okay, right now, and uh, you know you have been uh, stayed in India since maybe past nineteen years, maybe. Stayed in India. I was born there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so. yeah. So and now you are in U.S. What about your loyalty status? back as per you hmm. you know okay. what am i yeah i ask? guess yeah. <laughs> i guess you're asking me a blunt question <laughs> <laughs> okay i'll bluntly answer this perfect okay first 17 years of my life uh -huh. okay i was i was born in india for 17 years i spent in different regions in india uh -huh. and then uh, e i'd say better economic opportunity made my family uh, migrate towards the West, okay, okay towards the US. Mm -hmm. Pretty, mm -hmm. um, there was a reason why we are here specifically in Chicago, because mm -hmm. of my uncle. He had applied for us when I was a little kid. Mm. Um, and I would say, this is a hard question. Yeah. Okay, look, so my loyalty, I would say it's split. But in a way that it's it's not black and white. It's very so many shades of gray. Okay, so let mm -hmm. me tell you, I am loyal to both countries. Mm -hmm. Okay, but currently, okay, what what I have learned um, through my years in India, okay, and through my years here. So, as I said earlier, all the habits that started to form, yeah. they form when you grow up. So all the sun scars, the values that family gives you, yeah. your culture, people around you gives you. Okay, those were already there when I moved here. Hmm. And I gained hmm. more in the military. Oh, yeah. I gained more disciplined, I would say, more than the values. values yeah. Okay. So, I would say, from growing up in a, a good family, okay, it has taught me that my loyalty lies to whoever has um who has been loyal to me the most mm, mm, okay mm. which happens to be right now the us yeah, yeah. okay if i am eating from a thali a plate i'm not going to spit in it yeah 100% okay i will have so many good or bad or ugly things to say about wherever mm, mm. okay but one thing i cannot do is you know jump loyalties so currently, if India will go to war with the U.S. this year, mm, mm. I will fight against India mm. from the U.S. side. Because you had but, to. But yes, because I have to and I would still uh, do my best to, you know, have, n have <laughs> like, you know, have a different situation. Oh, yeah. Which, like, it's very unlikely that mm -hmm. these two countries will go to war. They're the two biggest democracies. One is the biggest, one is the oldest. Yeah. So they're both very big powers in the world. Okay. Even though one is only three, four trillion dollar economy, mm -hmm. but their soft power has been going up like yeah. exponentially. 
Yeah, 100%, okay? 100%. And they are wanted. India is wanted One, yeah. in the world. Okay? Uh, and because of India's neutrality, okay, being friends with everyone. Everyone. <laughs> okay? But yeah. only caring about their citizens. Mm -hmm. Their citizens comes first. Mm. Uh, I would say because of these reasons, I don't think they will clash. Mm, uh, yeah. I get out in a year. Mm. Okay, I pay my taxes here. This is the country that had given me opportunity to earn my first job, first, um, uh, my first, well, my degree, investments, everything is yeah. here. I own a house in this country. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a lot to take and give to this country, but my future loyalty does lie in India because mm. it, mm. it was originated in India mm -hmm. and that is where I have learned all these values and I cannot be separated from my roots. Yeah. Okay. I'll keep rooting for India um, wherever I am. Currently, I can root economically. By mm -hmm. Even by staying out of the country, I can still root for India. And uh, what are your That is views? Bharat. Yeah, Bharat. What are your views on uh, 2024 US elections? 2024 US elections. Um, this might be controversial, mm -hmm. but yeah. I can see that they're already rigged. Heck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the US has been becoming the country that I'm loyal to. Okay, mm -hmm. the country that I am loyal to. Okay, my country. It has been becoming Pakistan, where... Okay. Okay, <laughs> one little statistic or one little fact that I've learned from somewhere, it might be a fun fact. Uh, I wonder how many leaders of that country, prime ministers, mm, mm. have actually finished a term. Mm. I think the number is zero. Zero. Okay? Okay. They become and they start exposing what's going on in the country. Mm. They're out, jailed no. or exiled. Okay? Okay. So I feel like this, you know, detaining or... You know, not letting the real democracy, the real people speak mm -hmm. the truth. They're letting, they're, they're making uh, candidates like in this country where the you have you have hundred different options just for bread. Mm. Okay? Yeah. Oh yeah, man. The thing is from no, but wait. Yeah. You have hundred different options for a wall color, yeah. for a shirt. For just the crew neck shirt, I have hundred different options. Yeah. How come I don't have options when it comes to the most basic and important things of life? That can ch a t-shirt cannot change my life. <laughs> yeah. But okay, having a say in deciding the future of the country, mm -hmm. that sh I should have more options. Okay. Okay. Now when okay. Whatever you say about Trump. I'm no Trumper, okay? He's a crazy guy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One thing I do like about him, mm. he was trying to, behind his, okay, ugly ass mouth, okay, he'll just say whatever. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. behind all that, if you look past, what do you care about the most? Their policies mm -hmm. or how they look in front of a camera? Camera, yeah, policies. Yeah. So as soon as he started, changing, like the, talking about these policies that actually, hey, just, he was just curious, why is that China is having, they're stealing all our IP, mm, okay? Mm, mm. Uh, since last, what, two decades, maybe more than that. Mm. Why is random people are coming into this country from everywhere, from the sea, from the southern border, northern border, okay? Imagine what would happen mm. if India just opened up the mm. Pakistan border mm. and took all the troops away from there and uh, just left it open. Yeah. It'll right? be everybody will yeah. be coming, yeah. It'll be chaos. Yeah, yeah okay. 100%. For the people of the country. So like it'll be chaos. all the social services, they will be under impact under very heavy burden, all the medical services, everything the whole infrastructure of the country, they'll be under big burden, okay? Yeah. That's one example. So I say that by 
not letting people decide instead of, okay, let's say you have 90 different charges, okay, against this one guy. Mm. Whoever he is, you don't think, so you're saying that uh, put, put all the murders, thugs, all these people who actually rape women, okay, all these people who are child molesters, you have nobody worse than Trump sure. to prosecute. Why is all the attention on one person? One person. Is that because, but, okay, my question is why don't you let the people decide, okay, if he's actually crazy as everybody's portraying him to be, mm -hmm. first of all, half the country wouldn't have voted for him last time, 2020, mm. which was about 70 million. Second of all, let them decide this time too. Okay. Let them decide, okay, if people think that he's not good for the country, people are not stupid, okay? Yeah. He will lose mm -hmm. if people think that, mm -hmm. yeah, which is what happened last time. Last time. Okay. We have more things to talk about last election too, but whatever it is, okay, let the people decide. This is the oldest democracy as they say, mm. okay? Oldest modern democracy. So let them decide, right? So it's already rigged, in my opinion. I guess your reservations is going to be ending soon, maybe. Uh, you will explain it. And uh, what are your future plans after that? Have, have you something in mind regarding investments, regarding finances, regarding, you know, stock markets, geopolitical thing? What are your views? Yes, I do end my service next year in February. Um, I'd say my long-term plan is um, to make a positive impact in mm. the world, mm -hmm. but also not by bankrupting myself. So, like, mm -hmm. you know, I will try to, you know, uh, these, there's few things I want to promote in this country and uh, in India, both is freedom of speech, mm -hmm. okay, freedom of association with anyone, mm -hmm. freedom of saying anything you want, like freedom has to be the number one priority and letting the people choose, choose. their own future, okay? okay? That would be my priority um, aside from my day job mm -hmm. and hopefully eventually I can make a little bit of Im impact in the world positively. Um, um, let's see. Yeah, I just want to, um, you know, do good things. Mm. What are your marriage plans? <laughs> <laughs> marriage I know plans? I am, I am, I am letting this topic to bring it on, but marriage plans. Well, I, I also keen to know that, uh, uh, what uh, now that you are this matured enough to take your own decisions, you have your own financing ready, you have your own investments ready, how she would be, uh, which will make you, you know, feel good and which will make you choose her for your whole life. The girl I want mm -hmm. will. Oh. Okay, she will, uh, I would say first thing, she will have similar, I would say similar values to me, but still have her own perspective. Mm -hmm. And she will challenge me on mm -hmm. whatever I do. She'll ask me these blunt questions, okay? That will make me think, oh, why am I doing this, okay? Yeah. And I want to be that for her, okay? I want to be supportive and together uh, we would, well, my, my long-term goal is still the same. I want to create a social change mm -hmm. in this world, okay? And I hope we both are able to, um, you know, secure our lives first and then make our way towards um, doing something big in the future. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, um, all the basic values like, you know, supporting family, um, and being from our culture, you know, we need, we know that we have, we are not the higher power, we have a higher power above us, okay? Yeah. Uh, she needs to believe in that. And uh, I'd say one thing 
which is very important to me is staying close to the ground, mm -hmm. staying grounded and never being, um, never being, you know, disrespectful or, or thinking that you're above somebody, mm -hmm. you know, always being humble. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see when I, when I can find that kind of girl. Yeah. <laughs>